Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your listening to Revive FM on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Mixler, and TuneIn. The web address is revivefm.co.uk. You're listening to me, Barrister Tahir Ashraf. I'm your host for the next few minutes. Uh, chances are that this will continue until 3 p.m. Uh, our apologies that the previous program had overrun and so um, I'm getting a slightly shorter slot um, in the hope that this can uh, move rather quickly. You've probably heard, uh, if you've had an eye on the news bulletins over the last two to three days, that a great deal of change has been afoot. Uh, that great deal of change, of course, certainly within British politics, has been that the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, has decided to resign her post as uh, Prime Minister. As a result of that resignation, it then means that there will be a leadership contest within the Conservative Party. That, of course, means that uh, ultimately uh, the members of the Conservative Party will then be able to choose who becomes, one, the leader of the Conservative Party, and, of course, two, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Now, as I say, you're listening to Tahir Ashraf. You're listening to Revive FM with barrister Tahir Ashraf. I am a commercial barrister in my own right, and I, uh, as you know, uh, in my capacity as a barrister, there is uh, always uh, an impact of politics on business. Now, I want to start by talking about... Um, what the Guardian has written in respect of um, Theresa May. I'm looking at this article on my computer and it says the end game, the fall of Theresa May. Now it says uh, it seemed she could survive any setback but eventually a beleaguered Prime Minister ran out of allies and options. Do you agree whether she ran out of uh, allies? Uh, and options, or what do you say uh, is the position? Uh, you can call in or you can text. You can call in on the studio number. It is 0333 uh, The text number is 07851391365. Three, we are on Facebook Live. We are on YouTube Live. We are on Mixler and TuneIn. And, of course, you can catch us online at revivefm.co.uk. Now, turning then to the news report, which I was referring to moments ago, it says, after her emotional resignation statement on Friday morning, Theresa May retired to Downing Street for a few private comforting words with her husband, of course. Uh, Philip. Then she composed herself before calling in her Downing Street staff to say a final thank you. Uh, the Guardian report continues that as she entered the number 10 meeting room, which was packed with between 30 and 40 people, most of whom had been with her throughout her premiership, loud applause and cheers rang out. Uh, now, Less than half an hour earlier, many of the same officials and staff members, like much of the country, had crowded round television screens, uh, televisions, to watch her announce the date of her departure outside the front door of number 10. Now, some, like the Prime Minister herself, had broken down in tears. One of the things that I would like to raise and talk about today is whether that is a sign of bad leadership, that is a sign of good leadership. I want to hear your views, what you say uh, makes a strong leader. 
Is it okay in this day and age, the 21st century, for a leader to be demonstrating, to be showing emotions? Is it bad? Is it good? Is it wrong? Should we be criticizing Theresa May uh, for showing that emotion? Or should we, in fact, do the absolute opposite and commend her for her ability to show emotion uh, in circumstances where actually the eyes of not just the national media but undoubtedly the international media were on her. So, what are your thoughts? What are your views? You're listening to Barrister Tahir Ashraf on Revive FM. The programme is called Real Talk with Tahir Ashraf, with Barrister Tahir Ashraf. Uh, the studio number to call in to share your views is 033 triple four zero nine four zero the text only number is zero seven eight five one three nine one three six five we are live on facebook live we're on youtube live uh, mixler and tune in and of course you can catch us online at uh, revivefm.co.uk now carrying on with this news report it says uh, some, like the Prime Minister herself, had broken down in tears, which I say is understandable. The news report continues, but despite her swirling emotions, May still wanted to pay a personal tribute to those who had stuck with her through an extraordinarily turbulent premiership. It was very, very sad, said one staff member. She called us in and said... Uh, she was sorry things had gone the way they had, but she and all of us had done our best. She thanked us all for our work. She was composed and seemed okay, but it was difficult for everyone. Another, one who was there, said May looked calmer than she had half an hour before, as if, it, as if a huge weight had suddenly been lifted off her shoulders. But there was no... Uh, Discuss, disguising the pain of the moment and the grim realisation among her team that a premiership that had lasted less than three years and that had involved little but struggle and crises was ending in total failure. I'm just going to step back a little from that and say, well, actually, was this truly not a weight lifted off her shoulders? Do you agree that it was a weight on her shoulders? Was this premiership doomed to be the way in which it ended up being will anybody else possibly succeed in the uphill struggle task that she had was and that task being to attempting to try to unite the country attempting to exit the European Union ideally with a deal of course the current set of circumstances is such that as much as Boris Johnson and many others are indicating that we must leave the United, uh, the United Kingdom must leave the European Union on the 31st of October 2019, whether that is with a deal or without a deal. But is it the case that actually Britain and the United Kingdom cannot leave with a no deal by virtue of the fact that Parliament has dictated, Parliament has expressed its desire against a no deal circumstances. In other words, isn't it the case, isn't it the case that as much as we are now getting sound bites from many quarters, that yes, we will leave no matter what on the 31st of October. But actually, if there is one thing, as we speak, in which there is complete unity, that one thing in Parliament, so, let me say that again, if there is one thing in which there is complete unity in Parliament, that one thing is that Britain must not crash out of the European Union without a deal. In other words, a no-deal scenario is completely unacceptable to all members of Parliament, 
the entire 650 of them. So that is the one set of circumstances that actually Parliament has said is they are Parliament is not content with that set of circumstances. That said, actually, it's not the entire 650 of them now, because there are now MPs. <coughs> Excuse me. There are now MPs who are saying that they are in fact content to leave with a no deal scenario if that is where we are. Of course, that, me as a commercial barrister, someone who uh, has business contacts across the globe who are interested in trade with the United Kingdom as well as with Europe, that, I can tell you, is not a good set of circumstances for many of my clients and contacts because ultimately their businesses in the internet age, uh, in the information age, span the United Kingdom. They also span the European Union and, of course, many other parts of the world. So a no-deal set of circumstances for Britain and for many businesses actually is not good but when I say is not good that is actually putting it rather mildly many commentators have said that it is actually a disastrous set of circumstances for that to happen now uh, carrying on with this report I, I don't think at all that this is a task that is uh, by any stretch of the imagination one which is going to endure any leader with the entirety of the British public because let's not forget, if memory serves me right, uh, it was 51.9, no, it was 51.1% of the people who voted to leave and 48.9% of the people who voted to remain. Be that as it may, we are now where we are. So, turning back to the report, in July 2016, when Theresa May uh, entered Downing Street for the first time, she set herself two main goals that, were, that both involved healing national divides. The first, she made clear, when addressing the nation on 13th July 2016, was to do more to help ordinary working-class families get on in life. Uh, she promised those families that she would think not of the powerful but you by adding that the government I will lead, and these are Theresa May's words as quoted by this Guardian newspaper article online, she quoted, the, which quotes Theresa May rather, that the government I, will, I lead will be driven not by the interests of the privileged few but by yours. But it was her second goal to deliver the Brexit uh, that the British people voted for in 2016. But that was to consume almost all her time and energy and, in the end, bring her leadership of the country to its disastrous finale. Now, Will Tanner, who advised May from 2013 to 2017, said, after watching her resignation speech, that his former boss had always been spurred on by high-minded intentions and a sense of duty. But in the end, she had been defeated by a confrontational political system that she deeply disliked and brought down by colleagues who had refused to recognise the real-world need for compromise. Do you agree with that position? Do you disagree with that position? Do you think that the political system needs to be changed? If so, how do you think that the political system can be changed? Do you think that it can be changed for the better? If so, let me know. Share your views. You're listening to uh, Real Talk with commercial barrister Tahir Ashraf on Revive FM, the studio number for you to call is zero triple three triple four zero nine four zero the text number is zero seven eight five one three nine one three six five we are live on uh, we're on facebook live 
YouTube Live, Mixler and TuneIn, and you can catch us also on the internet at uh, revivefm.co.uk. Do call in, tell me what your thoughts are, tell me what your views are, uh, whether you agree, should Theresa May have resigned, and now that she has done, uh, what do you think will be the next uh, steps insofar as um, the leadership contenders are concerned? Do you think any of them are going to be able to get a deal any better than has already been on the table? Do you ultimately think whether or not Jeremy Corbyn is to blame in any of this set of circumstances? Because arguably, arguably, he didn't uh, participate with the Prime Minister. He said that he wasn't um, prepared to get involved in talks. Uh, in fact, if one goes further back into history a little bit, he didn't really get behind the referendum vote at the time that um, David Cameron was Prime Minister. Uh, not only that, um, there were other issues. Uh, just bear with me. So, uh, not only that, uh, there were other issues. So, uh, not only did he at the referendum not get involved a great deal, what about at the last general election? The last general election being, um, the last general election being in 2017. Uh, of course, after that, we've also had the local elections. We've also just had the current European elections. Uh, 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 and the number to call, if you're trying to reach me, now many of you have tried to reach me via text message. Thank you for that. Uh, the number to call is zero triple three triple four. 0940. Uh, as I say, you're listening to Revive FM with commercial barrister Tahir Ashraf. We are having a discussion about real talk. Real talk with commercial barrister Tahir Ashraf. The studio number to call is 0 uh, So, Jeremy Corbyn, does he have a lot to answer for? Is he going to have a lot to answer for in years to come? How will history recognize him? Is he arguably a better leader than Theresa May? Is he a better leader than David Cameron? Is he a better leader than, than any of them? Or in fact, is he just the same? So uh, I ask these questions because uh, surely Jeremy Corbyn cannot be free of the blame, uh, if if one wants to call it that. Uh, of course, the only, uh, as I say, the only real party that um, that uh, that was going to be dealing with this. I'm getting a call coming through. Hello. Hello. Is that Tay Russia? It is indeed. Hello. How are you? Hi, it's uh, Carlson. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Are you well? Very well, thank you. How are you? Can I take your name? Yes, uh, first name is Manza, third name is Iqbal. Manza, Manza Iqbal, thank you for calling. You're on Revive FM with Tahir Ashraf. You and I are live on the air. What would you like to tell me about yourself? What can you tell me? What, what do you do? Well, I do, I do a couple of things. I'm a, I'm a professional youth and community worker. I work with children, young people and families. Okay. To try to improve their outcomes, and then on the other role, I'm a, I'm a counsellor where I am in Lancashire as mm -hmm. well with the, uh, with the with the Labour group. So uh, uh, in a way, they're both connected. To be quite honest with you, both my volunteer role and my uh, my professional role. Okay. Well, can I take this opportunity? Presumably, you were elected in this um, this last local elections, were you? That's correct. Well, I take this opportunity to thank you uh, for taking the time to come on to the air with me, and I also take this opportunity to congratulate you um, uh, for certainly winning uh, your role as a councillor and being elected as a councillor. Uh, you've mentioned youth work, and actually, to my mind, this is extremely important, isn't it, that uh, people like uh, us are involved in youth work. So. Uh, what do you say then, insofar as uh, leadership qualities are concerned? Uh, I've been discussing earlier, I've raised it earlier, that um, 
uh, Theresa May, she has resigned uh, from her position. And in her resignation speech, towards the very end, she was quite emotional. Now, many people would say that showing that level of emotion is actually not a good quality of a leader. Others might disagree. Others might say, actually, it is a fantastic quality of a leader. What, what's your view? And I appreciate you're a Labour man, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> yes. I mean, to be quite honest with you, Tay, I mean, I've, I've been quite privileged in the sense that I've gone to university, I've gained an MBA in strategic leadership. I understand the role of a leader because uh, within my capacity as a, as a youth and community work manager, I've been a leader for many, many years. And whilst we're on leadership, I think it's absolutely imperative that any leader, even if it's, even if it's Theresa May or the Margaret Thatcher or even Churchill, that they actually demonstrate to the people we serve that we have an emotional contact with them and, and that we're not robots. Mm. The problem which Theresa May had previously with the, uh, you know, with the voters was that she was classed as a robot because she, shouldn't, she wasn't showing her emotions. Well, hang on a and second. Think, well, well, hang on, hang on. Uh, she yep. wasn't showing her emotion earlier, but insofar as this particular set of circumstances was yep. concerned, uh, you do then, if I'm clear, you do agree that actually that was quite courageous. Would you agree? Would you agree it was quite courageous of the second female prime minister that this United Kingdom has ever seen to be showing that level of emotion? She, she, she virtually broke down. So would you, would you agree with me that that was quite courageous, very courageous and arguably commendable? Would you agree with that? Well, I, I, would, I, I would take out the, the, the female bit, to be quite honest with you, because people aren't elected because of their, their, their gender. People are elected because of what they can do for the country. And regardless of whether she were, she's a female or if that was a male, I, you know, I think anybody who, let's be honest, you know, she virtually cried, didn't she, at the end, when she said, I, I, I love this job, I love this country. Mm -hmm. Even as a Labour man myself, you know, we, you know, uh, we, we, we were a little bit upset in the sense of seeing somebody who's, you know, being our Prime Minister, you know, um, you know being a yeah, previous uh, Home Secretary, then, you know, kind of crying uh, in front of 10 Downing Street. And being honest, that was quite... Touching, and if you ask any member of the public, and certainly in Lancashire, you know where I serve, you know I've spoke to many, many young people, and I spoke to many uh, adults, for example. And you know, while some of them haven't got time for Theresa May, they did actually say that they did feel very, very sorry for her when she when she virtually broke down. Well, um, well she held it. Again. She held it together. She held it together. Uh, you've said that. Uh, we should take out the word female, I would argue that actually, is it not the very case that she is a female leader by virtue of which perhaps she has previously felt unable to be able to show that level of emotion and perhaps because to her credit, she is the second female prime minister that the United Kingdom has seen and to her credit, she has shown some real serious emotion. And I would argue that actually would a male, any male in a leadership role like that, actually be able to show that level of emotion? Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to say because everyone's unique and everyone's, everyone's different. Now, you know, I mean, yes, you know, she, she cried right at the end and she showed that, uh, that emotion, but one could also argue that was that, you know, uh, what, what was that genuine or was that crocodile tears? I'd only just throw some theories in there. I don't think it was crocodile tears at all. I do think it was genuine. I don't think any um, psychologist or whomsoever you might want to bring in, as it were, yeah. to analyse, and of course there have been several people analysing this, the media the world over has looked at this. Uh, I'm not convinced there would be a single person uh, who would be able to say that um, her emotional state at that point in time, insofar as demonstrating and showing the public that she loves this country, wasn't anything but genuine. So, well, so I, suppose what I, I suppose what I want to get at, I suppose what I want to yeah. get at is a very simple thing. Do you agree that actually it takes a great deal of courage in the 21st century to be in a serious prime ministerial leadership role of this nature 
for somebody to be able to show that level of emotion. I don't think we are going to ever, or certainly not in a hurry, see real emotion of this kind, where there's a real passion, a real love. We, we talk about passion, we talk about love. What are you saying? To be honest with you, I mean, as I say, I'm a counsellor and I speak to many, many people on a, on a regular basis. And, okay. you, and you mentioned that she said, you know, she loved this country. But let's just look at her record as a leader. You know, she came into, you know, a government, you know, promising, you know, promising everything. And if, if you look at education, for example, even, even on the uh, radio this morning and even on the TV, in terms of our local schools, they are dying. They have no teachers, they have no resources, they have no equipment, simply because this administration under Theresa May has made massive, massive cuts to our uh, public sector. I'm a youth worker, for example, so if I can just finish, if you look at our youth services across the country, I mean, you know, we're in the north, uh, up north and you're down south, you know, uh, 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 this administration under Theresa May has virtually wiped out the youth service, youth clubs in every single part of the United Kingdom, and certainly in England. And hence, that's why you've got anti-social, anti-social behaviour up. Where you are down south, you've got massive, massive, massive issues to do with knife crime. And only, only a couple of weeks ago, there was a research done where there was a direct correlation between knife crime rising and the lack of resources within our, our youth services and young people. So, whilst we are talking about emotions, what we need to be talking about is her track record. And over the past few years, she's done absolutely nothing for the working man and for the working woman. Well, let me go back to you on that. Let me get back to you on that. Because if you think about it, surely it was this government, uh, surely it was this government and uh, not your predecessors and not uh, certainly not the Labour government uh, that raised the tax limits. So it's now gone to 12,500 or thereabouts uh, for uh, tax which means that those yeah. earning around that, well, there will be no personal taxation on £12,500. You mentioned the point about education and what have you, but isn't it the case that mm. actually it was the previous Labour government's overspenditure, over-expenditure under the Tony Blair era and so on that left the Conservative Party in a position that it left it at? But that discussion... It, it, this discussion is going a little further than I'm prepared to take it at the moment. You've, you've mentioned a couple of points. I'm going to address you on that, the, the, those points as well. You've mentioned education. We've dealt with that. I'm going to address you on, I'm going to tell you about the knife crime set of circumstances. The knife crime is predominantly being uh, an issue in London. We've got that as a serious issue in London. Uh, of course, London has a Labour mayor who has been here for a number of years now and is seeking a second term so uh, the question really uh, actually isn't nece- doesn't necessarily fall at the door of the government or Theresa May because Theresa May only mm. took over um, once David Cameron left and that was in uh, 2016 after the referendum so her record as you put it is only up to that point and not not strictly speaking before that so uh, when we're looking at various other issues, actually, we are talking specifically this afternoon about the styles of leadership. Now, her leadership is what her leadership record has been. But actually, if you look at it leadership-wise, Jeremy Corbyn has a lot to answer for, though, doesn't he? Jeremy Corbyn, he, the leader of the opposition, those who voted Remain might actually lay the blame at his door because he's the one who didn't properly campaign enough for a Remain position. And those, of course, who are interested in a Remain position now only really have one viable party, do they not? And that party being the Liberal Liberal Democrats. So, well, I mean, I mean the, the Tories have been bad with the Liberal the, the, um, Democrats in the past, and let's be honest, they didn't really achieve much. But in terms of just going back to your point about uh, Theresa and, and, and Jeremy Corbyn, let's, 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 let's be straight here. What's happened to Theresa May? It's not because of Jeremy Corbyn that she's resigned. She's resigned simply because there's been too many backstabbers in her own cabinet, in her own party, who's been wanting her out. For many, many, many months. Well, actually, if, if you think about if you think about Jeremy Corbyn here, 
uh, you yeah. use the word backstabbers, but ha is it not the case that Jeremy Corbyn's only interest has been the keys to number 10? Because if he was genuinely interested in the country, why would he uh, have come up with the vote of no confidence, the motion of no confidence earlier on? Uh, that was within the last six months or so. Why would he have done that if his interest was genuine? Why not offer the Prime Minister, why not offer to the Prime Minister and say, I am prepared to have talks with you to discuss Brexit? Yeah, I mean, why has, why has, okay, answer that, answer that. Jeremy Corbyn has been a Brexiteer himself for, for most of his life, at the, at the end of the, let's be honest about that. I, I haven't but, but, seen but, that in the, um, forgive me, yeah. I haven't seen that in the election literature that came through, certainly not at the local elections that were happening now, uh, earlier on in May, and certainly not at the European elections that took place now. He, he clearly hasn't set out a clear position. The election literature from the Labour Party has said yes. oh, we want to seek to unite the country. Okay. How? Uh, What's his proposal? Uh, it's it's, uh, it's not, it's, it's uh, not uh, so much what, what Jeremy Corbyn has to do. Let's be, let's, let's be frank here. At the end of the day, the administration who's in, who's in power over here is, is the Conservatives. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why Theresa May and this is the conversation which we're having up, up north at, at, at the same time in terms of uh, okay. uh, what's that from media. You know, uh, it's not so much because of Jeremy Corbyn that Theresa May has resigned. She has simply resigned for two, two, uh, two big issues. One, simply because the job that she was doing in terms of a Brexit deal was far too big. And, and secondly, what didn't help at the end of the day, uh, didn't help is her own colleague, her own cabinet members, her own, uh, her own MPs who weren't willing and supportive enough to be able to offer her the, the guidance and the support she needs to get a deal done. This is what you're doing okay. Court. Okay, I understand that. I understand that. But what about yeah. this? What about this? What about the fact that over the course of the last couple of weeks, in fact, just the last week, if memory serves me right, what about the position where Jeremy Corbyn himself first came out and said the talks have broken down, they have gone as far as they can go. Why did he not extend a real and proper hand of friendship for the sake of the nation? Why didn't he continue and get on with the talks to try to achieve something that the British public could stand behind? Or indeed, members of the Labour Party could stand behind. Because remember, <laughs> at the time of uh, remember at the time of the referendum, shortly thereafter, he said the Labour Party would respect the result of the referendum. He said that. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? He said yes. Good. Okay. He said the Labour Party would respect uh, the result of the referendum. But even within the Labour Party ranks, you have all sorts of movements by virtue of which you now have Change UK. You now have other parties who are interested in and categorically want a second referendum. You also have, and it's very unclear and quite frankly extremely unhelpful, in circumstances where we are not sure exactly what Jeremy Corbyn's party wants what do they want do they want a second referendum a second referendum is he now finally eventually going to be supporting a second referendum or is he not going to be supporting a referendum where does this man stand i accept that this criticism on both sides i accept bear with me i accept this criticism of the tory party but surely jeremy corbyn has a far more a great deal more to answer for. Well, Where does he really. stand? I mean, I mean, Where does he... Well, you it's, said it's, he's a Eurosceptic. I mean, Is he? Yeah, yeah. Where? Why hasn't that come across in any of the Labour Party's European uh, uh, election literature? Well, I mean, just to go back to your point, in terms of both parties,
fact, he's, as I was speaking to one resident up, up north, mm -hmm. let's be frank about uh, one of them said to me, you know, everybody's made a, a dog's dinner out of Brexit. We don't know where we stand at this moment yes. in time. Do we understand that at the, at the end fair. of the day? Now, as, as I said to you earlier, the administration who's in power is the Tory administration. Yeah? Okay. But they have a mandate and they have a responsibility to ensure that, as Theresa May said, Brexit is Brexit. Well, fortunately, it wasn't that easy at the end of the day. And that's one of the reasons why she's not in 10 Downing Street after, after the 6th of June. Well, you well, she's, saying, she's still in 10 Downing saying, Street un unless and until, excuse me, unless and until other, a leader is chosen, a, of the Conservative Party is chosen. No, it, it, it's, not, it, it's, not, it's not the Labour Party here or, or Jeremy Corbyn who's to blame over here. You know, if anything, you've got eight candidates now who, are, who are put a name forward for the leadership to replace Theresa May. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, people like those eight candidates who are to blame for not supporting Theresa May, if she had the support from her cabinet, and if she had, you know, people uh, you know, uh, like Michael Gore and like Boris Johnson, for example, backing her and supporting her, rather than backstabbing her, etc., I think uh -huh. we would have been in a far better place now as a country and as a nation, yeah, than where we are at this moment in time. I also strongly believe that we would not have seen Theresa May handing her resignation in if her own colleagues, her own friends, her own cabinet members were given the support. So, to put it blunt, it's not the Labour Party or Jeremy Corbyn to blame over here. If anything, it's her own colleagues, people like Mr. Boris and everybody else who are to blame over here for not offering the support, not working with Theresa. Uh, and, and given her the ammunition that she needs to get into Brussels and get us a good deal. Well, yeah. whatever your views on the people who have now put their names forward for the Tory party leadership, whatever your views on that are, in fact, let's just take a look at, for example, and I'm, I'm just going to indulge you on this for a very brief moment, uh, the, the, the Andrea Leadsom, the former leader of the House of Commons, she was with Theresa May up until a last couple of days. Isn't that right? And in yeah. fact, in yeah. fact, her, uh, uh, her and many of her other colleagues had actually supported that position, uh, uh, had actually continued to support Theresa May. The real issue that I want to explore with you is, mm. is not what you say that the Tory party ought to have backed her a great deal more because many of their constituencies are wanting to leave a great deal more than many other parts, uh, for example. But actually, uh, I'm trying to explore with you Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. He clearly, okay. he clearly hasn't put forward, or rather he hasn't put forward a clear stance. And if he has done so, I haven't seen it. You tell me he's a Eurosceptic. You, you've told me mm. earlier on he's a Eurosceptic and he has been so. Yet at the same time, it's very difficult to see how he is a Eurosceptic. And if he is a Eurosceptic, why not sit down properly and get on with negotiating a deal that works for everyone? On the one hand, he's a Eurosceptic. On the other hand, he wants to stay ascribed to the customs union. I just don't understand. And if I don't understand, and I'm a barrister, I, 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 you know, I'm a practicing barrister. I work in law. This is. If I don't understand, how is the British public going to understand? Well, if I was not, if I, again, you make a fantastic point there. You know, Joe blogs off the street. I think in terms of Brexit, they don't understand probably 60 or 70, 70% 70 of it. I get that. I, I, I agree with you. Brexit, as we all know, is an absolute minefield. It is a minefield, but what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get you to yeah. is tell me, if you're able to, it might be that the party line isn't clear on this, because Jeremy Corbyn isn't clear on this. It, it might be that he's more than happy to skirt around the issue. What's the position? What is his actual position? And let me narrow it down to this. Is he going to back a second referendum? Is he not going to back a second referendum? 
Okay, we have two quick points on that. I mean, Theresa May, uh, Theresa May's 10 point plan, which came out. No, no, no forget Theresa May. Uh, it's a very specific question. <laughs> is Jeremy Corbyn, yeah, yeah. Is Jeremy yeah, yeah, Corbyn she, going she, she to. Offered, she offered a second possibility of a second referendum. Yes. Well, that um, hasn't um, quite yeah. been put to Parliament. That hasn't quite been put to Parliament. She raised that as a potential possibility. And Forget, and because, so, so, well, Theresa May has now resigned. So what I'm trying to uh, ask very clearly is this. Is Jeremy Corbyn now likely to back a second referendum or is he not likely to back a second, random, a second referendum? It I, might be I, that you I, don't I, have I, the answer to that. It, Manza, it, yeah, might, be that you don't, it might be that you do. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not involved. Um, you can... If, if you listen to uh, Mr. McDowell, the Shana, um, Secretary, uh, mm -hmm. Chancellor, Chancellor. Mm -hmm. in, you know, he, he, he came out this morning and he actually said that you know there's a strong possibility that we need to consider a second uh, a re a, a referendum. It's not so much that we will support a second referendum. So hang on, let me get this. Let me get this straight. Yeah, the Labour Party is desperate for a general election. Would you agree with that? Or was that too loud? No, let me, let me, let me, let me say this way. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, do you think it's fair to say that Jeremy Corbyn would like to be Prime Minister? Fair to say? Well, he wouldn't be our leader if he didn't want to be a Prime Minister. Of right. course he wouldn't okay. be the Prime Minister. Okay, so... It's fair also to say that John McDonnell and the rest of the shadow cabinet would therefore, would therefore be in power and be in position if there was a general election and if, uh, if Labour were to take power today. That's fair to say that, isn't it? I'd probably do a far better job to speak with Brexit and probably do a far better job to support our leader. So, like no, 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 hang on, hang on. That's, that, no, all I'm asking is, is it fair to say that if Jeremy Corbyn were to win a general election uh, and his shadow cabinet were to win the general election all of those would all of those people would today for argument's sake be in power that's fair to say isn't it well they would be because the democratically elected aren't yeah, they by the, yeah, by the indeed, public indeed. so that's so it's fair and there's no there's no dispute you and i can agree on that yes yeah. yes of course we can, so yes. whilst at the same time You've told me moments ago that John McDonnell has come on air today and explained that they might now need to consider that as a possibility. So that's what you've told me, haven't you? You've just told me that, haven't you? That it, that's right. Yeah. So isn't it actually the case, and I'm now scratching my head and those people who can see me, uh, on online, on YouTube, and so on and so forth, will actually think, surely they too will be scratching their own heads and thinking, well, they want the keys to number 10. The Labour Party wants the keys to number 10. They want Jeremy Corbyn in power. John McDonnell wants to come in. All of the shadow cabinet want to be in power today. Yet at the same time, they have absolutely no idea as to how in the world they are going to be dealing with with Brexit. And did Theresa May and the Tories have? That's not the question. The question is... <laughs> it's, the answer, it's the answer, isn't it? That's, not, that's, a, that's a rhetorical <laughs> question. That's not even... That's not... What, yes, it's a rhetorical question. So, what I'm saying is, as much as Jeremy Corbyn would love to have a general election, he's not ready. He can deal with protests. He can deal with organising protests. That's great. He can deliver speeches. But actually... Dealing with Brexit is where we are. He has said he will honour the result of the referendum. He said that. You've agreed that he said that. You've said that he said that. Yes. Yet at the yes. same time, at the same time, even as of today, the Chancellor, the Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell, has, you've told me, been on air today and said actually they might now need to consider the possibility of changing Labour's policy of whether or not to back a second referendum. Isn't it the case, isn't it the case that John McDonnell is actually preparing for quite the kicking 
in the teeth, for want of a better expression, from the British public in the European elections, the result for which the results for which will be announced throughout the course, course of today. Isn't it the case that he's expecting a kicking and that's why he's now decided to make that announcement? It's interesting. I mean, actually, to be fair to John, and he's a northerner, would you believe it? Uh, you know, he, 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 uh, well, I'm afraid I can't give him credit for that. No, he understands the people of North mm -hmm. and, and their concerns. Mm -hmm. but I believe he understands you know, most people, the working, the working men, the working women. Of course, he's come out on air this morning, and he's actually said virtually like for like what you were saying, mm -hmm. Mr. Ashka, mm -hmm. that yeah. we are probably expecting a kicking in the European elections. Yes. And, and he's, he's, a, he's a very fair guy, you know, uh, jo, uh, jo, um, Donald, you know, uh, he did come out and he did say that we consider all our options, mm -hmm. which includes a second referendum. But let's be honest about this. I mean, uh, this talk of a second referendum has been going on for... Should he, should John McDonnell or indeed Jeremy Corbyn not have thought about this sooner? Did, it's, it's always been on the, on the agenda a second referendum simply because of 51% of who voted to remain in and I think was it 49% who won. Other way around. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, go, go out. Exactly, yes. that's right. So because it's so close, and because of the dirty lies which we heard in the in, in the campaign, people like Mr. Groves and Mr. 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 Boris well, about the two hundred and fifty. Well, I'm not convinced they were oh, dirty no, lies. No, no, but I think no, no, the they, they, were, they were lies. They, they, they were lies. They, 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 they misled the people of our country into believing that the two hundred and fifty million pound would have been saved and to go into the NHS. They are they are liars. And now we are then probably ha going to have. A liar, somebody who's misled the country in and Downing Street. I'm, I'm, not I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that that is the right way forward, and I'm certainly not convinced that they are liars. And you and I here on the radio, you and I are not in position they, to be able to judge. They, they have lied. We, we, we are not in a position to be able to judge whether or not they are actual liars, and it's not right for us to be levelling. It's certainly not right for us to be levelling those types of accusations in circumstances where actually the courts and uh, are the right places uh, for, for those matters to be dealt with. But my question, my question is, my question, uh, Mr. Iqbal, is is a very simple one, and that is, isn't it the case that the Labour Party? hasn't got its house in order. It's all good and well levelling criticism at a party that is in government, which is a task and a half, it's a mammoth task, trying to deliver the Brexit that people voted for in circumstances where it was unclear as to exactly what the position was, because this is a complex set of circumstances, extremely complex set of circumstances, because at the very least, for the last 40 plus years, we as a nation, as the United Kingdom and Britain and Northern Ireland have been involved uh, within the European project. We have, in fact, even before that, even in 1950s, the 1951 Convention, European Convention on Human Rights, British lawyers went to write that. So we have had, as a nation, an intrinsic involvement with the European Union, with Europe. So it's not straightforward to extract ourselves out of that relationship without there being issues that need to be reconsidered, properly, thoroughly evaluated. If, for argument's sake, there was a general election tomorrow, and as a result of that general election taking place, Jeremy Corbyn were to take the keys to number 10, as well as John McDonald, the shadow chancellor. Between at least the two of them, it's clear that at the moment they are still, it's all good and well criticising the Tory party, it's very easy to do that. It's all good and well, but actually they themselves haven't got an idea or a, a plan as to how they propose their version of Brexit. Because remember, Jeremy Corbyn very clearly said he supports the will of the people, he will respect the referendum, 
that was then this is now and even now despite what the labor party conference was even now you're telling me that they are still thinking about the possibility of so when jeremy corbyn in the news and the labor party have accused theresa may and the tory party of running down the clock isn't it the case that in the absence of an actual plan by the Labour Party, actually all they are doing is simply sitting back and letting the clock run? Surely, surely, surely a far better proposition, and you can disagree with me on this if you like, surely a far better proposition would be to prepare and plan. And actually, this is an interesting point, because you, you, you've done the MBA degree, you've read for the MBA degree, it's a Master's in Business Administration. That's right, isn't it? Correct. And as a result of doing that, or, or throughout the course of that degree, you will have inevitably studied for the leadership element. That's correct. And you being a former youth worker, uh, no, not former, you're still a youth worker as well, aren't you? That's correct, yes. Yes, so as a youth worker, in fact, it's your responsibility, one might say, to lead and to demonstrate leadership to younger people. Correct. So, yes. when the leader of the Labour Party doesn't show enough leadership through preparing a plan or through being able to demonstrate the preparation of a plan what does that tell you insofar as his leadership is concerned i think that's well, not it. very good is it what 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 what, what, uh, what your listeners and our, our listeners need to hear that it's the conservative administration who are in power here no, I, I accept that i accept that but, but the point i'm the point i'm the point i'm making is is that actually yes it's the conservative party that is in leadership and leadership is not very easy and to be in power to be in power isn't very easy at all but what i'm saying is actually actually isn't it the case that jeremy corbyn hasn't actually got a plan either so, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy it, it, has a plan because if you, if you look at the last election, the general election which we had, you know we had a fantastic manifesto, uh, which which was which gave the Conservatives a very very close ride, and to put Theresa May back in Ten Downing Street. And if it wasn't for the other party supporting Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn may well have been the next Prime Minister. So, so sorry, if, so it, wasn't, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for what? Sorry, Je if it wasn't for the, uh, the, the the party from Ireland supporting DUP, uh, the yeah. reason, yeah. absolutely, Democratic more Democratic than likely Party. probably would have seen that's right. Probably would have, would have seen uh, a, diff a different prime minister. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that we have a fantastic manifesto. The Labour Party has, has has a vision. We believe we've got a good leader, which certainly is inspiring many many young people across our country. At the end of the day, our membership is the biggest membership in Europe, one of the biggest memberships in the world. That demonstrates to you, and it should demonstrate to your listeners, that if you want a good leader, you're not going to get many followers. And Jeremy Corbyn has got hundreds and thousands of followers, far more than any other leader in Europe or in this world. So just to make it clear, of course he's in touch with the local man, the local woman on the street. Of course he's inspiring. Uh, you know, I've got, you know and, and he has got leadership qualities. In, in terms of a plan for Brexit, and I keep going back to it, uh, Mr. Ashraf, the Tory party has made a dog's dinner of Brexit, yes? Your own, your own, Theresa May's own colleagues and her own backbenchers and her own MPs and, and her cabinet members, they're the ones who have made a dog's dinner of this by not supporting Theresa May. It's not Jeremy Corbyn, it's not our shadow ca cabinet, it is the Tory administration who messed up Brexit and they messed up our country. And it's time for a change and it's time for a, a, a general election at this moment in time. Because if you are going to see a new leader, leader in 10 Downing Street from the Tory administration, I only think it's fair that the public of our country and the people of our country get an opportunity 
to then vote for, over a party which they think are going to serve their best interests. Now, Theresa May did that in 2016. I think that uh, I think Theresa May uh, is now on the out, but uh, I'm certainly not convinced, uh, Mr. Iqbal, that. Um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is going to be the leader that um, that we all will be looking to in the future. I do take your point that many people do feel disgruntled. I take your point entirely that many fe many people feel disgruntled at uh, at many of the Conservative Party, many of the government's um, um, cabinet ministers, and so on, who haven't supported. Um, uh, Theresa May in the in procuring and finalising the Brexit <laughs> deal. Uh, I, 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 just just to hang on, I, I'm just not also convinced. I, I'm not convinced that that is going to continue to be the right way forward, and I'm certainly not convinced. Uh, the, as, I'm deed, as indeed I'm sure that our listeners are not convinced that a general election is the right way forward. I'm going to have to say goodbye to you now, Mr Iqbal. Thank you so very much for your involvement in this programme. Perhaps we can hear from you again another time. Um, uh, no, no, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. And I, I, I just wish that, you know, the, uh, the goal of party politics at the end of the day you know, this is a great nation which we live in. Thank you. I agree it's entirely. It's a privilege to live in a country like this, and it's a privilege to serve the people of this country, whether you're a barrister or whether you're a councillor at the end of the day. Very kind. Thank I you. I just the British people deserve better, and they need to be treated with a bit more respect, regardless of which party is in power. And whichever party is, is in power, I hope that they are a party of compassion, that they understand that they, ha they are there because they have to serve to the interest of the British public. Lovely that words, l lovely words uh, with which I'm in agreement and uh, I can agree with you on those words. The British public do deserve uh, a party that is able to uh, explain uh, what its views, thoughts are. Uh, and uh, I think that in the days and weeks to come, we will have uh, that. We need to have a country uh, uh, that recognises uh, that recognises its responsibilities. It is a privilege, uh, and uh, to be able to serve the public is indeed a privilege. And of course, uh, that privilege. It is also a privilege to be in government. So. Thank you very much to our listeners and thank you very much to our callers. I'm afraid there isn't enough time for me to take uh, an additional call at this stage as much as I would love to have had uh, done so. And I apologise. The text messages uh, have been coming through. It was quite a gripping discussion. I will conclude by saying that I remain unconvinced, unfortunately, that uh, a general election is the answer uh, for the current woes uh, that the British public seem to find themselves in, or that we find ourselves in. The results of the European elections will be announced throughout the course of the day. Uh, you've heard uh, Manza Iqbal, Councillor Manza Iqbal, who is a member of the Labour Party, uh, who has said uh, that they do accept that there is going to be a kicking uh, in the teeth, as it were, for want of a better expression, uh, by the electorate. Uh, and that is why the Labour Party are now thinking about the possibility of a second referendum. I put it to him, I said to him, that look, it's... Um, it's rather late in the day, isn't it, for the Labour Party to still be thinking about ideas and it's actually um, rather telling that they don't really have a policy insofar as Brexit is concerned and certainly not the leadership. Be that as it may, uh, time is ticking. We will know soon enough what the views of the electorate have been. Uh, you've heard me talk today about the styles of leadership. I will say this that regardless of whatever people have thought about the style of leadership of Theresa May, regardless, uh, irrespective of how uh, people have felt about that, it takes a great deal of courage, it takes a great deal of guts to come out and uh, stand in front of global and international media 
and express the way in which she expressed uh, uh, her views and her love for her country. It is quite simply as plain as that. And it might also be the case, and this has certainly become my view, uh, it might also be the case that this was the second female British Prime Minister and because she was female, she was fe she felt that she was able to let us have a glimpse into the emotion uh, that uh, it is needed in this day and age by leaders of today. She let us in to see that level of emotion. I think hats off to that respect to that it takes courage it takes a great deal of courage i'm not convinced that a male counterpart would have done that is it wrong i don't think it is wrong at all uh, i don't think it is wrong at all for her to have shown her emotion be that as it may we are now where we are and um, uh, on that note i'm going to conclude this session and uh, hopefully i will catch up with everyone again next week and i ask that you tune in to revive fm uh, a real talk with commercial barrister to hear ashraf on revive fm you will be able to catch me next week on zero triple three triple four zero nine four zero uh, as ever we are on facebook live youtube live mixler and tune in you can catch us on revivefm.co.uk uh, for now, leave you until next week. Isn't that